Clapper. I wanted to call it a gavel. Greetings and salutations, friends. Welcome to the show. Second episode of November Project, the show. <laughs> Why are you yeah, 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 yeah. Just but to try it again, but like really upbeat. Are we recording? Oh, we've been recording. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Second episode, November Project, the show. <laughs> How are you? Welcome back. That's right. I'll say some stuff like, welcome back. And then Laura, you'll say like, what will, what will you do? Yay! <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I, think, so, I think by the third or fourth, we'll get, we'll have it. Yeah, it'll get there. It requires some time. So uh, last episode went out live on Friday afternoon and uh, past three days. So we're recording this on Tuesday at 2 p.m. And uh, since then, we got some analytics about... <laughs> You know, kind of support how the show is gonna get uh, get moving going forward, and so <laughs> forty five minutes apparently is way too long for our audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it sounds like most people. Who knew? It sounds like most people. Who knew? Out. Who said that? Huh? Laura, Laura, how how long were people watching the first one? What was the average? Um, eight minutes. <laughs> 847. 847. I think I introduced myself in those first eight minutes. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to go back and listen to those eight minutes. We're going to have to get things moving a little bit uh, quicker this time around. Uh, which brings me to our first topic of today, five-star review. Five-star review. <laughs> five-star review for you. And you, and you, and you, and you. Welcome to the first ever five-star review. In this section, we'll have Boyan tell you what we're doing. No, what I said Laura. Oh, Laura, 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 Laura. <laughs> We'll work out the kinks before we start recording. All right. Yeah. Uh, five-star review. Everybody goes on Yelp or go Google or whatever and puts in their one-star reviews because people like to bitch. So we're only going to get five stars. Oh, right, 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 right. For our people. And it's going to be most likely a person each week. This week it's two, Ooh. and we're awarding this week's episode of Five Star Review. <laughs> All five stars. All five of them go to Tara and Maggie, the co-leaders of November Project <laughs> LA. Why? <laughs> I, I, I have no idea. Why do you tell me? It's because they're cartoons. I watched their stuff on Instagram today. I, I They would be a really easy cartoon to make. All you need is a lot of uh, purple. And uh, positive, like whatever color crayon positive vibes. <laughs> and uh, I just, I, I don't like, they just, they, they're just kind of zapping you through their eyeballs. I don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I was to ask my daughter Marley to illustrate Tara and Maggie, there probably would be a lot of glitter, a lot of rainbow stickers, a lot of <laughs> like very neon highlighters. And magic markers, like yeah, you know that the the tattoo artist Bosco, who who does a lot of November Project stuff <laughs> out of Worcester in Boston. If you were to show him like who they are and what they're about, and you know some of their videos, <laughs> be like, hey, can you do a cartoon of them? He'd be like, no, nah, it's all it's done, it's all done. <laughs> no, just yeah, there. healthy. There's a lot yeah. of like exclamation points, like all around their heads. <laughs> 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 they're keeping exclamation points alive. In all seriousness, why would you give them five stars? Right. So we're giving them five stars because, I mean, I, I genuinely <laughs> was concerned about those two in particular when we switched to virtual workouts. Um, they just are so full of energy. I thought for sure one of them would break out of the, like, like through the glass. Like, I thought for sure we were going to get you know, the West LA Sun Times, and it's like Maggie on the sidewalk, like losing her mind because she's like, <laughs> so I'm very proud of them. They've put together um, very West LA videos, which are full of energy and excitement, and they're keeping their people engaged, which is so hard. High production, I, too. It's not, I, it's not I, janky. I, like they're they're like, really putting love, time I, I love the humor when, like, I'm laughing at them. I don't know if they want me to laugh at them. Like, right. do, they, do they, are they trying to be funny? Are they serious? Oh, and it's over. <laughs> yeah, by the time it's over, you're just kind of left being like, I guess the joke's on me. I don't, I don't. Yeah, so they're good. They're five. They're five stars. 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, five star review. So if you have our listeners and viewers, if you have anybody that you'd like to feature in our segment, five star review, please post in comments. Mm. I think mm -hmm. well. that, that could that could work. That could work. Plus, we're inside the first six to eight minutes, so people are still right there with us. It's nice. <laughs> it's nice. Um, how do you entertain yourself right now, BG? Ooh. Um, I, so it's not funny to say like I'm losing my mind, <laughs> uh, but um, it's tough. I think <laughs> it's tough. Well, I mean, you're losing your mind. Yeah, yeah. well, I'm losing my mind. I, screen time is on the up and up. It's a bummer. I was trying to cut that out of, like maybe a month ago, like doing some of the things on the iPhone where you set limits and time, time, like whatever. You're getting feedback about how much screen time. I, I've given that up. I'm on the phone. I'm looking at TVs. I'm looking at my computer right now. I mean, screen time is up. I don't recommend that, but I also don't have a, a, a response for that. Um, solution. Solution. Uh, this is going to be lame, but I, I've admitted this to a lot of friends. Uh, Sometimes when I'm feeling like a, a running slump, so obviously there's all these virtual workouts going in. You can join in on some of the cities that are hosting the Zoom stuff. You don't have to be in Baltimore. You don't have to be in San Diego. So that's kind of fun to, to join those crews, but um, there's a lot of days in the week. And so I'm trying to get back into running and uh, I'm doing it with like some of the tech stuff. Like I got a run watch. I'm back on Strava. Like the stuff I'm not proud of, but it kind of keeps me like, I don't know. Sometimes a new pair of shoes, new pair of socks will like make running it like one percent more exciting, and it'll get you out the door. So I'm doing a bunch of those things. This hundred day challenge right now, I'm wearing jorts. I thought that'd be more fun. It's just really hot. Uh, <laughs> and then what else? I don't know, man. I picked a tough time to stop drinking. So like, I guess the brewery, the, the brewery down the street's closed. So that's good, but. I don't know. I, I, I don't have any good answers. I, oh, I'm writing, I'm writing letters. I'm writing a lot of letters. But then once you put the stamp on, like that's that fun is over. So I don't. Um, fun story about letters. Uh, this is completely unprompted, but thank you for reminding me. When you graduated Northeastern, we both graduated the same year. You moved to China for one year I, to teach, in, going. teach English. <laughs> <laughs> and so. As part of your education of, of the little bright minds across the world. I'm so you glad are, you're telling the story. <laughs> you're, you're assigning them PayPal's. Yeah. Pen, oh, sorry, not PayPal. PayPal. You said before PayPal, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. PenPal. And PenPal uh, that I received, I forget <laughs> the poor kid's name because it wasn't a real name. It was right. the name that he gave himself. And I think he was like, Ninja Turtle, Optimus Prime, something yeah. that, that Bobby like Bobby Digital, I think. Bobby Digital. Yeah. Bobby yeah. Digital. Well, yeah. because the kids, the kids were allowed to choose any name they wanted that was English, and and they just they they came to me and they had to kind of get them approved, and so no one was really trying to get like Brian approved or Kevin. You know, they were like um, this one. Um, older kid in the class came up to me and he really he really wanted to be janet jackson so that's a fragile moment where you have to just be like yes you can be janet you know and so so there's pizza hut there's janet jackson bobby digital <laughs> do you remember what the letter said it's something that um brogan tells me that you're tall and strong and good rower or something along those lines i still say that so basically it, it was almost like you, you gave him a handout like a piece of paper with bullet points and they basically included every single bullet point into a letter. Yeah. And it was so endearing and so awesome. And I responded back and I never got it back because that was while I was in Syracuse in grad school. Right. The following year I, I moved and I never did like the whole address forwarding. So I I fell out of touch with Bobby Digital. So Bobby, if you're out there, <laughs> you're watching. Shout out. I live in Vermont now. Get in touch, man. Yeah. So, so writing letters and a little spoiler alert: uh, neither of you are getting them anytime. So, I mean, you're just not in the mix yet. You, you know what my handwriting looks like. It's kind of a mess, and so it, you'll know when I've really lost it when the both of you start getting letters. I talk to you guys way too much. So, if you get a letter, 
like reach out to Goldie because it's I, I've run out of shit. Um, all right, let's, let's keep let's keep moving. <laughs> Laura, what do you got? I also I don't think most people know I have a lot of letters over the years from VG, and I don't think it's <laughs> still great in script. I mean, it's cool. Yeah, it's a cool. I, I don't know. It's just it's like, like yeah. On. Yeah, you're I mean, from the script. The way the economy's going, we'll all be back at like the medieval fair, but it won't be like for play. It'll be for real. And Boyne will have a bunch of chickens. And Laura, you'll have old computers. I don't know. Rogan will be writing with a quill and, and ink. I'll, and I'll be the penman, the penmanship. And Ethan Bookman will be sitting next to me and we'll be just telling a tale. Anyway, thank you for keeping those. Do you really keep them? I have, I've got two or three of them. Huh. And like it's it's one of those funny things where Connor's probably like, Why are you keeping <laughs> totally <laughs> they're really nice Your and they're co-workers whole packs of like keepsake things and they're yeah. and I if you were to ever look at it, he would probably have some yeah. questions. <laughs> no, I yeah. I mean I keep everything. I keep all the mementos from our travels, Laura. It's no big deal. They're just in a shoebox. It's not good. <laughs> You don't. Oh, yeah. that I can see from you directly. BG, you, usually says you bitch. Sign off. <laughs> Love Brogan. So, yeah. so, so the people in my life that I really like, neither of you, but Chris Heisler, he's a letter writer. I got one from. Um, I so Lumi and I got one just a couple of days ago from Matt Swinetech. You know Swinetech, former co-leader of NP Grand Rapids, but not even him from his wife. Oh. Nice. She did some illustrations uh, of a bulldozer, uh, which had an insignia of a snake and a light, so Lumi Cobra. Anyway. Uh, <clears throat> Original artwork. So letters. Anyone that's watching this, reach out to me, DM me. I'll give you my address. You can send me some letters. Sounds like Laura Boyne have enough. I, I, I think you open a P.O. box for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's Lord, keep what we got. Hello. <laughs> how do you how do you stay sane? Oh, I drink a lot. <laughs> I'm drinking everything. I'm drinking enough for BG. Um, no, I are the liquor stores open still in Massachusetts? Yeah, they're essential. Are they? They are. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, no, I I was actually thinking of one specific. So I'm like actually other than okay, running. Doing a lot of indoor stretching. Like, I don't know. I um I made an obstacle course the other day and it was for my 18 month old, which turns out is not advanced enough yet to go <laughs> failed. Failure. So I actually made it for myself. So there's a lot of stuff like that happening. There's a lot of like diving into a couch full of pillows that like, I don't know. Wow. On a Monday, I wasn't normally diving into a couch full of pillows, so this is kind of a silver lining. Right. Well, <laughs> so you get, you're getting into American Ninja Warrior training. A little bit. A little well, bit. And, and Boyan, uh, it's a tough day for you because oh, I'm heartbroken. So you're you're gonna you're about to go and you're about to lose it. Do you want to just explain? Well, I thank you for knowing <laughs> which one I was picking. Uh, that is, by the way, very impressive. Um, I woke up this morning to about eight inches of fresh snow powder. Beautiful. And, um, uh, and this is going to sound so freaking privileged and so don't that, but I'll go with it. Um, <laughs> I, went, uh, I usually go before the, the virus starts spreading. I would, um, go to our local ski resort where I would bring my snowshoes. I would hike to the top of the mountain and then, Ski down, free fitness, right? Still continues. Um, if you get to the top of the mountain, you can ski for as long as you want, uh, as long as you're not using chairs, chairs cost money. And so I was hoping this morning after I dropped the kids off at daycare to go and just enjoy some fresh snow. And then just to double check, I went on the website and it said like specifically bold letters, hiking, snowshoeing, snowboarding, everything just, no, because they obviously don't have the resources. If someone falls and smashes themselves into the trees, they don't have resources to bring you down the mountain. So I was really, really upset uh, for like 30 minutes. And then I got home and I did 
yoga. And remember, so this is an interesting wow. yoga class that I took. Wow. Um, probably like 12 years ago, um, I got from a friend like a digital copies of P90X that I still have in like a Google Drive or something. So I did P90X yoga. There you go. And I feel good now. I'm not. I think, I, Laura, huh? These back and forth videos make people feel ill. <laughs> I saw you doing this again. No, it's just for my own stuff. So um, I think that now that uh, Boyan's uh, lost his scheme, which like not much of the world's gonna have a huge pity party there, but I get it. And then um, when your kids have to be at home all day. Yeah. And then, right. and, then, and then the wife has to be home all day. Like love the wife, love thine wife. <laughs> Um, and but and that's, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. Like no one is breaking, no, okay. no one is breaking so next, their heart over me. A good segue into our next topic, which was like the internet. What was that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, the what yeah, do we call it? Yeah, that internet was a corner. This is the internet corner. <laughs> Welcome. Right. So let's let's pivot into the internet corner of things that you found entertaining on the internet this week. Yeah. And, sure. <laughs> I haven't even told you about this one because I feel like this is a good time to kind of expose Boyan for kind of what kind of employee he is. So, okay. Again. So, he, so there is this tweet that went out essentially that was like um, working from home. It kind of exposes your partner because you've never been full time working next to their working self. Like I think we call and all have our personas. So and like the whole thing, it started with like, I just learned that my husband is a let's circle back kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> just like, who knew? And so then people started responding and reading with um, what their partners are. And I was losing my mind laughing. But I wasn't thinking about Connor. I was thinking about Boyan. <laughs> Emily know that you are uh, 100%. I totally agree. <laughs> kind of guy. Oh, she's got to know. She's got to know. What yeah, she does because that, that's work going and that's home going all at the same time. There are no differences here. I don't. I don't buy that. I don't yeah. buy. That no, I don't buy that. There's no differences. I mean, I think you're probably close. I think we're all probably close. But there's like work phrases that you would never. Like, do you ask? Do you ask? Well, I also, know, I also never tell Emily that I 100% agree with her. <laughs> nice, that's funny. I, I go, I go. You might be right. Right. That's, that's the extent of. Do you at the end of a, at the end of a at the end of a conversation with Emily? Do you ever ask about the key takeaways? <laughs> <laughs> because I heard you right. What you were saying is yeah, totally, totally. So. Um, Emily, I I want to let you know I hear you, um, and then just like let's get aligned on the next steps here. But do you guys do you guys share calendars? Like, do you send calendars to your spouses just to coordinate things? <laughs> He's getting fired up. I I feel like this one could have been sent by Goldie. My husband has a work voice. I can always tell he's on a work call because his voice is louder. He also, <laughs> he also takes most of his calls in our master closet like he's some sort of home podcaster. And I think people should know where you are right now, BG. Yeah, <laughs> I, think, I think we should wrap this because we have <laughs> we have a, a guest caller that is he's about to join us. He's in the bathroom. He's in the bathroom. I'm in the bathroom. I'm in the bathroom. Bring him in. Boy, and bring him in. Uh, I just... Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Sir, yourself. What's up? Introduce yourselves. Who are you? <laughs> my name is Steve Prochno, co-leader of November Project Buffalo. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Um, so, Steve, we've been on for about 20 minutes, and you okay. joined in perfect wow. time because BG was about to go off wow. on uh, sharing calendars with, her with his spouse. Do you share calendars with... Uh, with your family, friends. What does that mean? To exactly, <laughs> exactly. To schedule, schedule shit. So, um, BG, why don't you take it? Well, wait, wait, wait. The the wait. So hang on. The calendar's moved into the work voice. 
Someone said, Steve, someone said out there in the world, you can tell when my husband's at work because he has a work voice. Do you have an NP voice? Do you have a yoga voice? Do you have like a catch up with my brother's voice? Do you have oh, a- 100%. Talk it out. Because you, I think you live with your girlfriend. Talk that out. How many, yeah. how many Steve Frogma voices are there? And can you label them? Oh, man. Well, there's yoga voice-ish though, because I try to keep it myself though when I'm teaching. I don't want to okay. have a different- voice when it comes to that i mean people say especially my girlfriend army voice when it comes to november projects <laughs> <laughs> but i just i think that's just the same as playing sports when i was a kid so so for me it's like sports voice but army voice comes out uh friends voice is we grew up in the 90s and we thought we were tough so we we have we used we used to use uh trying to be more hardcore than i think we really were <laughs> we're talking to friends yeah. And back to the calendar. So, like, you're a busy fella? <laughs> no, I really want to know. I really want to know. I don't really have a calendar. I don't really have a calendar. I think that that's something. So like, that you, don't, you don't schedule, like, all right, so so to schedule this call, you're like, I have something from 12 to 1, right? Or 1 to 2 yeah. or something like that. So, like, right. you remember it all? Yeah. I, I don't even know how to make a Google document. I don't believe that. You have yeah. so much going on. Don't you teach like a thousand classes? I guess, I guess not. I do. And I just put, I put some here and there in my, my phone and that's about it. <laughs> do you ever write on your hand? I write a lot on my hand with Sharpie. No. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I used to work in restaurants and I always remember, I would always memorize my schedule. And so, I don't know. I just know when I got to do things each day. All right. so, Steve, this is off the cuff. I'm making this up. I'm going to, I'm going to ask, I'm going to tell you a label, a, a, a Steve Procknell. And then you're gonna have to introduce yourself by saying, "Hi, I'm Steve Procco." In that voice, okay? Wow. So as much energy or as little, just me. So okay, this is. I'd like you to just say, "Hi, my name is Steve Procco," as if you're speaking as yeah. NP Buffalo Steve. Hi, my name is Steve Procco. Okay, good. That was pretty good. That seemed right. That seemed pretty good. <laughs> okay, now give, give us give us your um, live-in boyfriend. Hi, my name is Steve Procco. You just got home. Hi, my name's Steve Brockman. Oh, it's a little more gentle. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Try to bring it down. I felt start like you Yeah. I started you're meeting, you're meeting Jack Green, Laura's one to three year old son. <laughs> Introduce yourself. Yeah. What's up, man? My name's Steve Brockman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This is a lot of pressure. I don't think you've actually been to this one, and this is your last one. You are introducing yourself to the group at November Project West LA. You're traveling. <laughs> What's LA? What's up? This is Steve Rockwell coming from November Project Buffalo. <laughs> okay, I don't know if that was a test, but if it were, I think you passed. Yeah, yeah. I think they'll allow you there now. Also, if this, if this November Project thing doesn't work out for you, BG, I think you can be great casting director. <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally. So, Steve, we're talking about we're talking about some of the. Um, as everyone's like jobs are changing and things, and, and you're sharing bathrooms, or maybe you're just stuck in a bathroom. Um, what are some positive vibes? What's the silver lining of this time right now? Because I see you online on rooftops shouting at the world. Are, are you faking it? Like, how, how are you finding this upbeat vibe? What's, what's great right now? Self-improvement. <laughs> I mean, I got a routine right now that's pretty incredible. I've always had routines. But right now, my routine is I get up at 6 a.m. And I do my morning meditation, cold shower. I do <laughs> half an hour of yoga. And then I go upstairs to my rooftop and I do our shout song uh, live on November Project Buffalo. And then I either go for a wave vest walk or a run. And so for two hours, I just get to just do me without any other responsibilities. And I feel incredible. Usually I have to be out the door by about 5 a.m. most mornings. So I have extra time. And then I get to bed earlier. I'm getting more sleep. Uh, I get to spend more time on doing things that I've wanted to get to and catching up with people. And I'm learning so much more about technology now that I never <laughs> <laughs> spent time. Like, <laughs> Boy, it's pushing the calendars. I just taught a Zoom class on Zoom online right before this. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so, so the life before children, Steve, the life before children. Steve, one, one of the things we're talking about is like where, like where do you find inspiration? Where do you find like upbeat shit these days? I, you are for me, you are one of them. There's a bunch of coaches, there's a bunch of people in yoga, there's a bunch of you know, fitness, sure. But when it when I open up your stuff, it's like um, your phrase is win the morning, 
right? You talk about that. And win the day. Win the day. So translate that. What does that mean? How does that apply? That means when I get up, I have a choice on how I want to steer my thoughts, my actions, and all of that. And so I'm going to set myself up by doing things that's going to allow me that if, because I can control what happens in the morning, depending on when I wake up, but everything else that happens later in the day, things come at me. And so if I load myself up with physical and mental stuff, when those things come at me, I'm good to go. So then I feel like walking in the rest of the day, the day is going to happen. But if I, if I load myself up with all these positive things physically and mentally, those things will bounce off of me a lot easier than if I didn't take care of myself at all in the morning, just woke up and just decided to do the day. Okay. So then, and then who inspires you? If I'm looking at your stuff being like, yeah, let's win the day. Steve pushing me in the right direction. Steve's pushing me. Yeah. I like that. Who do you go to? A visible person. Like for example, like Laura loves Amy Schumer. Eats everything up that she puts yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who, who, who do you love to hear from? See, inspired by that stuff. Uh, well, I listen to a lot of podcasts. Michael Gervais, Rich Roll, Lewis Howes, Gary V. Uh, those guys will 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 do it for me in the morning. Um, even uh, Tom Bilyeu, Jocko Willick, the the Navy SEAL, like David Goggins, I might listen to like a two or three minute clip from one of them. It might not be like a whole long format, but if I need a little bit of a boost, I'll, I'll reach out to one of those guys who I've never met and, <laughs> and take something in and I'm like, oh, okay, cool. let's go. Or, or a book, you know, like I, I, we've talked about this. I, I like Ryan Holiday's books. Um, I read a lot of those. And so I might read a passage from that or put on music that I don't know, I'm feeling the vibe works for, for that time. And so under these uh, kind of odd times, and you're obviously in the fitness industry, you're an instructor, you, your livelihood depends on um, being in a studio and being able to teach. How is that transition affecting you directly? And how is that kind of, how do you see the, the industry adjusting to it, if at all? Well, the industry is adjusted very quickly in the fact that you see, I mean, we all probably see it on our social media. It's how many people are going live now, but that wasn't really a thing as much, say two weeks ago. So I see a lot of fitness places. Some of them are doing it for charge. Some of them are doing it for free, whether it's Instagram live. I mean, everyone has found out how to use Zoom in more effective ways. And some of them are doing donation based. Like I see people being demoed for certain things. Uh, studios are transitioning. I even see studios are renting their bikes out. They're renting their weights out. CrossFit gyms, I saw lines on social media of them picking up kettlebells. I went to one of the local places that sells fitness equipment. They're out of all of their dumbbells before everything shut down. So everybody kind of scrambled to get what they pretty much needed, the necessity. It's almost like food, but with fitness. And then the studios are just saying, okay, how can we be resourceful during these tough times? And I think they're, they're in a good way, Everyone's copying each other and saying, okay, I saw this place do this. Why don't we do that too? As opposed to before, I'd be like, oh, well, we don't do what other people do. We're going to do our own thing. I think that everyone is leaning on one another to saying, okay, let's use what everybody else is doing and how can we build that into a way that works for us? Well, and it's funny. It's funny. As, uh, as Americans, we got, we got, we, we made a rush on the things that we need. You know, we got our toilet paper and our, and our, Weights, so we're gonna have real diesel arms taking tons yeah. of poops, and so I think I think we're good. Yeah, I think we're good to go. Well, people are using toilet paper as functions to work out now too, as well, like balancing and push-ups and all that. I yeah. haven't seen toilet paper on shelves in Buffalo in, in in a week or so, so I don't know if other parts of the country is just getting it more. But yeah, stocking up. <clears throat> here's a, here's a November project specific question, and then I think Boyan will probably move us on. I don't. Yeah. Yeah, one more thing. So when I was in Buffalo, we talked about city, certain November Project cities. This is a very November Project question. Um, that have similar uh, size of the group or vibe or like maybe it's mostly about running or maybe it's some stairs. Or I would like you to publicly pick a city that you would love to or maybe you would seamlessly be able to co-lead. What's yeah. a dream city that Steve Crockmill just goes to when this whole coronavirus thing blows over, what's a city where you feel like you want to like, give that vehicle a drive and walk? Talk about that. Well, the, the short answer for that one would be Boston because they're in a stadium every single Wednesday. Right. And that to me, like, I just want to yell and run around the stadium. Like, I've been to other November projects and I love their spots, but 
I don't know, there's something about being in that stone stadium, that cement stadium, where, I don't know, it's almost like a call to action of just getting in there and just breathing it in, man. So I think that that would be, on a Wednesday, that would be my first place. What's, 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 sorry, what, what you got to say, what's the absolute, like, fish out of water situation where, like, you show up to what city and, like, your whole proctonalness just doesn't translate? <laughs> Ooh, uh, San Francisco, because they can't make noise. There's no music. They have to, like, do it in silence. I'm like, I couldn't, I couldn't operate here. They're trying to get up the stairs. I'd be like. <laughs> you, know what, you know what the beauty about that is that the leaders have to be extra witty. Oh, yeah. yeah. Got to be funny if you, if you got it. <laughs> yeah. Mad props, mad props. But I would, I, I would have to, I would have to change up the game for that. Yoga voice, yoga voice. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Um, well, friends. So, Steve, no. uh, I don't know if you saw the first episode, but it was forty-five minutes long. Actually, forty-eight. So we decided we're going to cut this one shorter. So we are already two minutes over what we slotted to do. Okay. So thank you for, for, for uh, joining us. This was Thanks for having fantastic. me. Uh, I know you're a busy fella. You have a lot of things to do, so I appreciate your time. <coughs> oh, Laura Green had something. Um, if I wanted to take your class on Zoom, how do I do that? Ooh, great question. Right awesome? now, right now, it would be next Tuesday through Power Yoga Buffalo. Okay. Power and Yoga. I would put that link up in my social before that. That's the first scheduled one I have as of right now. And though, you could join us every single morning at 7.15 Eastern Standard Time. Shout song, burnout. That's free. <laughs> Explain that a little bit more. Explain that a little bit more. There's a okay. lot of never been That's in Buffalo. Don't know what you're talking yeah. about. So the shout song is what's played every time the Bills score a touchdown. And if you know the Bills Mafia, they go cray. So that, it's, also, it's also shout from Animal House. Animal House as well. Got it. But they sing just like um, Sweet Caroline in Boston, very, very similar nice. to Buffalo for the Buffalo Bills. So it's a citywide theme song. And I just thought, like, why not keep hyping everybody every single morning during these tough times to help get up, get moving, shake it out, breathe it out, get outside, recruit your family, recruit the people on your street from afar, social distance, and let's get it going and start the day positive. So every morning, I just go up to my rooftop with my speaker <laughs> you and I just put it down. Breathe in the air and let it rip. And I'm so fired up afterwards. So anybody can join. We have, we've we had people from other parts of the country join in. And it started with one day. I'm just going to keep going. So, and are you, are you when, when, that, when people request to split the screen with you, are you open to that? Or do you not see that stuff? If they bring it? Live screen. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going into that now. Yeah, I would be open to that. Okay. But they got to bring it. Okay, got to bring it. Got to bring it. Got it. Got it. Got it. <laughs> Yeah. All right, guys. We got to shut this down. Steve, right. it's always great to see your face. Thanks so much, bud. Love you guys. Uh, Laura BG, talk again. Whatever. <laughs> uh, stop recording. Steve.